Shabarata. From zero to hero, from prison to pala, from prison to pala, ala ta 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 te ya, mighty, 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 ala ta ta ta, hebu bedi ke jioma, atoba jaye, hebu du mare. Now what did I do when you love me like this? Oh, <laughs> Now what did I do when you love me like this? Oh, what did I do? Oh, oh. When you, I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve your mercy, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too. Thank you for loving me too much. I just came to thank you, my God. You love me too much. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Jesus is saving and begin to say, Father, thank you. Wave your hands wherever you are, wave your hands to Jesus. Just wave your hands to Jesus tonight. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Jesus, you are worthy. 
Jesus we are worthy. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we worship. Somebody make some noise in the air this evening. Hallelujah. This kind God do. We never see your type. Oh. This kind God do. Blessed be your holy name. This kind God. This kind God do. I never see your type. Oh. This kind God do. Holy Your hands are Jesus. I said, This can God, this can God, oh, I never see your type, oh, this can God, oh. Let's be a holy day. Oh, say this can God. This can God. Oh, I never see your type. Oh, oh, oh. this can God. Oh, let's be a holy day. You took my money into dancing. You took my shame and gave me fame. Oh. You turn my misery into a ministry. Yeah. Blessed be your holy name. I say this can go do. Oh, oh. This can go. Oh, oh, we never see it. We never see your time. Oh, yes, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, yeah. This can go do. Blessed be your holy name. There's no one. There's no one like Jesus. There's no one. There's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. There is no one. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. Come and see, there is no one. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Let's go, I walk on, I walk on, I walk on. No one, no one. I search and search. No one, no one. I look around. No one, no one. There's no one, there's no one. Oh, we sing, I walk on, I walk on, I walk on. Oh, let's go together. No one, no one. I search and search. No one, no one. I talk. There's no one, there's no one like me. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like you. Go ahead, don't Jesus, let's go.
God is good. My God is good. Hallelujah. Let's go together. Oh yeah, go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, 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 hey. My God is good. My God is good. Jehovah good. Everything a double double. 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 Oh yeah, everything a double double. Everything a double double. Oh yeah, everything a double double. Everything a double double. Oh yeah, everything a double double. Everything a double double. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody shout Hallelujah? All right, that was for the teenage brothers. I don't know if we have youth in the house. Can somebody give Jesus a shout of praise? That one is for sisters' meeting. Can you jump up on your feet and begin to shout, Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Today is the day that the Lord has made that the brothers will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm rejoicing. Can you tell your neighbor I'm rejoicing? Tell your neighbor today is my day. Today is for me. Hallelujah. Come on, can you celebrate Jesus with a clap offering? A big, big clap offering. Hallelujah. With same joy, can you celebrate the grace of God upon the life of our Father, the Restoration Apostle, Apostle Professor Johnson Suleiman? I thought you'd do better. And in same joy, with same wonderful, excited feeling, can you celebrate our own dynamic mother? A mother wants all that is due for her. Can you celebrate our mother? Reverend, Dr. Lizzie. You cannot be celebrating my mother than you are. You, I don't understand. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. This person I wanted to celebrate, don't stop clapping until I introduce the person. And make sure your clap is loud. Can you put your hands together? Keep clapping. A big, big clap. One of the most outstanding, heavenly well-packaged, dynamic, well-positioned, strategically made, full of all that God has made. Can you celebrate your wonderful self? If you believe you're good and you're nice and you're unique, well-packaged, celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now, you have to sit down well. As a king that you are. Take dominion. Sit as a king ready to, ready to preside over his kingdom. Sit well. Sit well. Comfortable. Hallelujah. Now tell your neighbor, welcome to church. Say it well like who you are. Say welcome to church. Hallelujah. Without wasting much time, I'll just quickly run through the announcement as we progress. God is wonderful. Jesus is beautiful. Jesus is beautiful. Hallelujah. Welcome to Brothers Forum. I thought somebody would clap his hand better for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And please, the brothers, we have this forum has been in existence for many years. And the brothers, our meetings is every second Saturday of the month. Every second Saturday of the month. 12 
p.m. is the time and this is the venue. Make sure you are valuable as God is ready to bless us today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody put your hands together? Something big is happening in Omega. The International Youth Conference 2021 comes up the 6th through the 9th of July 2021. And it's promising. Shortly you'll be seeing flyers of all the ministers that will be blessing our lives. I want you to queue into this program. Make sure you are available. Your manpower, your everything that is needed for the conference is available to move the conference onward to what it should be. I'm telling you, it's promising. It's going to be one of the best, if not the best, that have ever happened here in Auchi, Edo State, Nigeria. Please, I want you to be ready for us. Hallelujah. Are you ready for us? Hallelujah. Now, quickly, our dad is already seated. Please, can you be up on your feet, get something of good seed, something that can send your request far and fast. Can you be up standing as we take our offering? Hallelujah. Be up standing as we take our offering. Make sure you have something well packaged. Now lift up your offering to heaven. Lift it up to heaven. Lift it up to heaven and begin to send that offering on an heron. Lift your offerings up. Your offerings are blessed. Your offerings accepted in the name of Jesus. Amen. All the days of my life I praise Everything that I have now you gave to me, Baba uh -huh. Lord, I say for your love I'm grateful Yes, you love me plenty, you came to die for me Jehovah Rapha Are they using the house? Come on, let's sing, come on, come on I am that I Louder My great provider yeah. the around There's no one else like you Lion of Judah, you're the mighty man. Hey guys, come on. All the days of my life, I praise you. Everything that I have now, you give to me. Man. I know how you sing it. Say, Lord, I say for your love, I'm grateful. Yes, you came to die for me. Hey, Jehovah, Jehovah, I am that I am. Hey, I search around. You are not rejoicing. Come on. You are the mighty man. Hey, God has given me to. I, God has given me to. He has given me to. He has given me to. God has given me to. I say, Hallelujah. 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 Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Let's sing it. He, he has, has taken, taken away my sorrow. Now I am free. How many are you singing? Say, come and see what. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come on, everybody. Say, He has taken away my sorrow. Now I am free. I got me for hallelujah, for I got me for hallelujah, for I got me for hallelujah, for I got me for hallelujah. Come and see, come and see, come and see, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come on, straight, come on. He has taken away my sorrow. Now I am free. Come and see, come and see, come and see, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken. Away my I said, come and see, come and see, come and see, see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows. Hey, I got my buru, hallelujah, buru. I got my buru, hallelujah, buru. Are you singing? Come on. I got my buru, hallelujah. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, every day now shakara do do. Double double, heaven the blessings now you may never see. Ah, yeah. God, the grace and mercy is always upon us. Jesus this afternoon. Come on. Rejoice, everybody. Say, 
When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Oh, hey! I dance like a winner man. Oh, yeah, dance. I say dance. Oh, yeah, dance. Hey! I say dance. Oh, yeah, dance. I want to see the best dancer this afternoon. I say, when you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Oh, when you see me dance. I dance like a winner, man. I say dance, oh yeah, dance. I dance, I dance, I dance. Hey, oh yeah, dance, oh yeah, dance. I say when you see me jump, I jump like a winner, man. When you see me jump, I jump like a winner, man. Jump, 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 I run like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me run, I run like a winner, man. Oh. Ah, when you see me run, I run like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me run, I run like a winner, man. Oh. Now, when you see me shout, I shout like a winner, man. Oh. Oh. When you see me shout, I shout like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me shout, I shout like a winner, man. Oh. Oh. When you see me shout, I shout like a winner, man. I say, oh, oh, I win a man, 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 oh,
want to thank you my father in Jesus name give the Lord a clap offering amen you can sit down you can have your seat amen Right now, I want us to just start something which we'll continue and we'll do um, for several meetings we are going to be having. Um, Mama actually inspired me to do what I'm doing now. When I see the level of attention given to single sisters, she's been doing that for a while. But I deliberately was sensitive because sometimes um, that somebody is doing something may not mean that God is leading you in that direction. So you have to wait. One of the ways God speaks, God may not give you a verbal instruction. God can just give you peace. And peace is God communicating. Anytime you lose your peace, the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you is not involved. The Bible says, for we know what he shall speak, he shall speak peace. So, I watched for a while, and um, when I just had a leading to do that, I said, okay, we can now talk, talk, discuss, we interact, because only a man understands a man, all right? Is that true? A man understands a man better. And as we talk, we we'll consider a lot of things when we, whenever this meeting is held. We're going to discuss so many things. And we're going to also know those amongst us who need support. As we are gathering, we are seeing the faithfulness and all of that. Then we can now know those who need support also that we need to support them. Those who are going through challenges that maybe some of us have passed through. And God helped us to overcome them. So it's important that we check, we consider several areas of life. But one of the most um, detrimental areas of life is an angle we're going to handle today. Silly things that single guys do. Silly things. That single guys do. We're going to consider every aspect, but today we'll just consider an aspect. I hope you are single here. Are we unmarried? Are we unmarried? Huh? Are we unmarried? Okay. You say what? We never marry. Okay. All right. Praise God. Silly things single guys do. Now, what you don't know is older than you. What you don't know is stronger than you. Why does a lecturer stand in front of a student? Because there's something he knows that you don't know. It's not about his age. Some of you are taller than your lecturers. Right? But that doesn't make you a lecturer. There's something he knows that you don't know and that gives him an advantage over you and so you have to listen to him. Silly things that single guys do. We are going to consider different aspects. There are aspects of career, there are aspects of spirituality, but today we want to consider the aspect of relationship. And I want to consider the aspect of relationship. Now one of the biggest problems people, you say, especially Christians, don't forget everything I'm going to be talking about today is for those who are believers. If you're not a believer, it's not going to profit you. It's just going to appear like entertainment. But it will make more sense if you are born again. The big problem we have is that you see a lot of people. How many of you have seen people who are very spiritual? You know them, that these people are spiritual, but their marriage failed. You've not seen that? Have you not heard about pastors who had issues in marriage? And you're asking yourself, why? Because there's something you must know. Prayer 
can never be substituted for knowledge. Prayer can never be sub be, become a substitute for knowledge. Speaking in tongues can never replace information. So no matter how spiritual you are, as it were, there are certain informations that if you do not have them, you are going to have problems with yourself. Not just having problems with yourself as a man. The problem is that when a man makes a mistake, a generation makes a mistake. A community makes a mistake. So there are, there are troubles because we must understand that there is a way, no matter how a woman speaks in tongues, there's a way they are created. There's a way they are wired. And if you see a man who is having a home and his home is in peace, it's not just a matter of grace. It's knowledge. It's what? So if you want to have a home and your home will be so peaceful, it's possible. Some of you are in a relationship right now. How many of you are in a relationship? Raise your hand if you lie. If you lie. Really? Raise your hand. Look at these guys. I'm going to point you and call the name of the girl. <laughs> Raise your hands. Okay. And I'm not aware. This meeting is to be continued. <laughs> we will we we'll talk later. Let's finish this one now. We're on camera. Later we'll talk. Okay. I know some of you. I know some of you. Some of you I'm not aware. All right. There's a way a woman is wired. And when you understand when you understand it and begin to follow them that way, that's what brings peace. It's not just prayer, fasting. That's what brings peace. You understand? This is how a woman is. This is how a lady is. This is how to follow them. When you understand that way, you can be with a woman for 20 years. You will never have a problem. If with all of that, there's still problem, that's the one that is now a witch. That's the one that's now spiritual. Because you must have a lot of those knowledge. And men don't know because how many of you know men think like men? All right? Women are opposite. Men think forward. Women think backward. They must go backward before they go. If two guys are quarreling, they have issues. They don't settle like, guy, you see this thing you did. No. They can just go to a football feed. Are you following me? Say, a ah, guy, my friend, behave yourself. Ah, this match, how far? They have settled. Is that true? They are moving. They are moving. When you have issue with a woman, you must discuss that matter. Don't just go forward. So that's why some of you are wondering that, but I said sorry. No. Don't just tell her sorry. Discuss it. You see, after I said you sorry, you are still angry. Mm -mm. You want to move forward. She wants to move. Tell her. Say that thing that happened. Let's talk about it. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's talk about it. And don't act like you're in a hurry. Just keep calm. Say let's talk about it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Don't explain. Don't defend. Because if you defend, she'll go backward again and tell you one that you did the other time. Just say, are you serious? Ah, so I did this bad. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Hey, what is wrong with me? Don't say sorry, oh. Don't say sorry. Never tell a lady sorry. You must say, I am sorry. Don't say sorry, because sorry can be sorry for you. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't say sorry. Don't say sorry. A lady that sends you message every night, every night, every night, every night, every night, and you are replying, 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 replying. She's leading you on. But she expects you to use your brain that sometimes, please be busy. No woman will respect a guy who is always available. At times, be working. But they will lead you on. You don't get what I'm saying. They want that attention. But at the same time, if you have nothing doing, they are still going to come after you. You don't have a job. How can I have a job when you are always making me stay on the phone? So a woman can lead you on but expects you to still use your brain. Where we shall a young man cleanse his way? Psalm 119 verse 9. Where we shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to thy word. If you must have a relationship with anybody, 
you must first have a relationship with God. Never date anyone until you fall in love with God. Until you are falling in love with God, don't date anyone because your relationship with a woman is going to be guided by your relationship with God. Is your relationship with God that's going to guide how you relate with the opposite sex? Is your relationship with God that's going to guide how you relate with somebody you intend to get married to? Many don't have a relationship with God. Your relationship with God helps you to discover yourself. Because one of the reasons people have problems is that they are looking for themselves in a relationship. They feel they can be happy in a relationship. Nobody in this world can give you happiness if you have not found peace with God. So never enter a relationship with, if you are not truly born again, please I beg you, and you are in a relationship now, break it. Do what? Break it immediately. Make peace with God, have a relationship with God, and when that relationship is solid enough, then you can have a relationship with somebody. And that relationship you have with God is what guides your relationship. Because why? There is somebody you must not offend by being with this person. Being with God is what gives you restriction. Being with God gives you maturity. You won't know how animalistic a young man can be if you take the fear of God away from him. Without the fear of God, the animalistic tendencies... Amen. You must have a relationship with God. You must have a relationship with God. You must be totally connected to God. And this we have a lot of people make mistakes. The major and the minor and the minor and the major. There are people that are worried. They want to have issues. They want to have peace. They want to have um, joy. But they have no relationship with God. So every, they, they keep destroying lives of people. They destroy the life of ladies. They destroy their life. Ruin their life. They ruin their lives. There are boys who have entered the life of girls who are very, very disciplined until they entered. They told the girls how to drink. Are you listening? They told them how to drink. They told them how to smoke. They made them do abortions. So have you been a blessing to that life? You have destroyed it. And can I surprise you? When they condemn that one, they, won't, they don't want to marry that one that's been condemned. They are looking for one that... So when you don't have a relationship with God, you, can, you, you behave like an animal. But your relationship with God is what helps you as a young man. So we cannot have this conversation at all. And after the relationship with God, there are things that you cannot do because you don't want to offend God. It's not about the person. It's about you can't offend God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lady in this church who's a member of our church. The son was my best man in my wedding and is in Canada now. Two of the sons are pastors. One is a pastor, one is an assistant pastor, I think. But one is a full pastor, the other is around ministry. It was, it was their house, Mama and I met when we were in courtship. That's where we used to meet, that's where we meet ourselves. Oh, we meet 4 p.m. there, bam, we'll go there. We sit in the city room, we gist, we watch movies, we discuss, we rub minds. From there, I see her off close to her house. I turn back. That woman observed her courtship and noticed that you know that kind of house you are sitting, you are in the city room, everybody's walking past. You know that kind of house? Eh? Everybody's walking past. Both of you are sitting down like this. They are walking past. They are seeing you. You are not going into the room. Both of you are there. You are just in and all. Today, she's, she's still, she has been a member since then. Since 20, 2004. She's still a member now. You know what? That character is what encouraged her. Are you following what I'm talking about? Just imagine if I come to the house, I enter the son's room. The son was my best man at his own room. Till date, mama never knew how that room looked like because she never entered there. So just imagine I did that. If I'm preaching, if I should not be here again. Are you following what I'm talking about? 
But that impression, she said to me, that thing was what gave her an encouragement. But there are people today who are in relationships with people. There's nothing they have not done. Nothing bad. The only thing they have not done is they have not robbed. They have not gone to rob. Anything sin, anything evil, they have done it. You know why? That fear of God doesn't guide them. You rather, you rather lose that person than to lose God. You rather lose that girl, let her go, than to lose God. So when nothing guides you, nothing restricts you, one of the advantages of walking with God and the fear of God is the law of restriction. Once you are walking with God, there are things you can't do because the Lord will not permit you. A young girl kept her body. She never met a man until she met you. You disvirgined her. And you expect God not to punish you. No, why would God not punish you? Ask yourself. Somebody kept her body. It was you that destroyed it. And to you, you feel like you are very weak. No character. She came. Some other people came. But they were matured enough to say no. But you just came in. Violated her. And you are the one who conquered her. You are the one who laid her. No. It's a shame. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. But I want you to have that mentality. So that you don't go further. If you have made such mistake in the past, don't go further. The way you're looking at me, what's going on? <laughs> Somebody said this one, Papa Joe did today. Now, wow. <laughs> He's just judging all of us. I'm not judging you. <laughs> Amen. But it's the truth. Every other thing I will tell you is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Are you not a surprise? Even people who are celebrities in the world, they are not coming to church back. Are you aware? They are all getting born again now. And you have been in the church. You are not ashamed. They went to the world. Conquered the world. They are coming back to Christ. And you, you are in Christ. You are thinking of going. You are going where people are living. <laughs> if you are not careful, you will be the only unbeliever. <laughs> be surprised. I think you are missing the club. You will go to a club. You will be there alone. Everybody has gone to church. The church that you left. <laughs> the church you left to go to a club. You go there. You will be the DJ. You, you, you serve yourself drinks. You close the door when you are leaving and go home. People are coming to God. Big politicians. Celebrities are, are having encounters with God. That's to let us know. There's no life outside God. Is that understood? Is that understood? Right. So that's one of the things you must do. It's a relationship. It's something you learn. What? How do I say this? Relationship is like a book. It takes years to write it. But it takes a second to burn it. Did you hear that? It's like what? A book. It takes years to write it, but it takes seconds to burn it. If you don't know it well, you can destroy what you have built in the split second. So the first silly mistake that single guys make is not having a relationship with God. But you don't have a relationship with God, forget it. Because that's the foundation for every other thing you will ever do in life. That is it. That is it. If you, are not, if you are here in this place today and you don't have a relationship with God, it's an opportunity for you to fall in love with God. Not just have a relationship with God. Be crazy about God. Be fanatical. Don't be that person that you have a relationship, you're just trying to hide. No! You are on the bus and you just see one worship song. You are sitting at the behind. You just see one worship song the driver just put on. Don't, don't be pretending. Mm -mm -mm. No. Uh -uh. Are you a pastor? Kebota. Mm, thank you, Father. Don't hide it. In that bus. Hey, Jesus. So gabrata. You know some of you, when a girl is sitting by you and the girl is very beautiful, you can't do that too. No, you are, you, you are, you are, you are trying to say, ah, hey, if I do this thing now. That's, that's the best time to do it. Because that's a soul that should be won. Somebody's dressing skimpy and the rest. 
Oh Lord. One day I was walking to see a friend of mine and there was a girl that was standing by him. He's an evangelist. She was standing with the girl that he was talking. So I was coming. I said, Evangelist. I said, Evangelist. So the girl said, What's the matter? I said, Nothing. Ah. I said, Why are you the shake head? Evangelist, what did they happen? I said, Ooh. He that denies me before men. So that's the best time. Just imagine how God will be proud of you. That despite those who are around, you don't care. You are worshipping him in that car. Thank you, Jesus. The only one that can secure your life. Thank you, Father. No, but someone will please that person in the car. So you must build a relationship with God. That's the first silly mistake single guys make. Not having a relationship with God. Number two, sing, mistake single guys, most single guys make is having multiple relationships. <laughs> Especially this age of civilization when a lot of nonsense is going on. Multiple relationships. Who is this one? This one is my fiance. Who is this one? My bestie. What is wrong with you? What is bestie? He said, this one, we are not doing anything, though, but we are, we are close. Have you seen, have you heard that before? There's nothing between us, but we are close. What is your problem? So long someone is not your blood sister, sir, there, there are chances for the devil to be funny. There are chances. See, we are just close. We are just opposite sex. And there's something you don't know about women. Men hear with their ears. Women hear with their feelings. There are some women you didn't see anything but you have said many things there are some people as far as they are concerned you have never asked them out but both of you are dating you didn't ask them out but both of you are dating why because of the concern she didn't come to church you call her you're not in church they say yes hey, I, I, I was looking i didn't see in church yes okay then, have you eaten yeah okay okay are you all right we're looking sad today what's your concern now no, what's your concern? She's already getting ideas. And so many people have entered into all kinds of multiple relationships by that. And there are some people who cannot say no. They have no control. You see, being with one person is a disciplined decision you must take. Because as you grow up, you're going to see all kinds of pretty women. In fact, you keep seeing people that look like what you want. Every day. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, this one get respect. Okay. And I'm already dating. I'm already dating Anna. Well, let me just get this one closer. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You are with that one. You are with Hannah. You now see another one. He said, Good day, sir. Ah, 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 sir. Ah, you look unkept. Oh. Ah, ah, what's going on? You look sad. Oh. This one is scary. No. Let me keep this one on the side. That's how King Solomon started. Huh? This one has character. This one is tall. This one is neat. This one is spiritual. This one can sing. That's how a man enters multiple relationships. It takes discipline. One! One woman is enough trouble. One woman. One woman put us where we are today in life. All, everything that happened. A whole garden was lost. One woman. One woman. A whole garden was lost. One woman. And you have two. <laughs> you will lose a city. <laughs> a whole garden. We are where we are today. So, there are, that's a mistake you are going to make. Deliberately define it. When somebody is assuming things, please always bring them back on track. Oh, I miss you. Please. How? Are you following me? Oh, I've not seen you. I miss you. How? I'm saying this because a woman that you lead on and at the end, now you never said anything. There are many young men who are victims innocently. Women have carried their pictures to places. They never open their mouth. Their photographs are in different shrines. You are busy, yeah? 
He is my peace. He has broken down everyone. And there's somebody holding your picture on the mountain. You will not have peace. You will not have peace. You will not have peace. <laughs> now, you didn't say nothing. Are you listening? You didn't say nothing. You were just being nice. And that's why you must be careful. I just want, to, I want us to gist. Yeah. You're just being nice. You're just being nice. You've been a good person. Uh, it's normal. You've been a gentleman. And uh, she's getting ideas in her head. So you must define it. You must define it. Amen. You must define it. Or else. Be surprised on your wedding day. You have. A crisis. I've seen people. Stab. Poison. Beat up. Organize all kinds of stuff against a young man who they thought had the mind of marrying them. He never opened his mouth to make a pronouncement. My thought you have me mad. He said, But did I ask you out? I shall speak louder than words. Can I say this to you, sir? There are things if you enter, you can't come out. Don't enter. I'm going to say something now. There are people that go out on a date. They say just a harmless date. No date is harmless. Say it's just a casual date. There's nothing. We just went out. So no. It's a foundation. A seed is being sown. A seed is being sown. A seed is being sown. The second mistake or the third silly mistake some guys, single guys do is proposing to a lady just to tie her. Once a lady hears, I will marry you. They feel they have, they have tied her. She's not going anywhere. They look for one ring from somewhere and just put it in her hand. That, that, that is just to trap her. They think that's an easy way for them to trap a lady. That's a silly thing that some single people do. They will bring her to the house, introduce her to her mom. They are not ready for marriage. They are not ready. The Bible says in Songs of Solomon, don't stir up love before the time. Don't introduce a lady to your family when you are not yet sure you will go all the way. Don't bring her to your house. Don't be interested in meeting her own people until you are sure. Don't think that once you do all of those things, you can trap her. Destiny is too precious to be toyed with. Your life is too valuable to turn it to a comic zone. A, a comedy zone. You just met somebody and you In fact, there are people... Have you not seen people that proposed to a lady the day they met her? Ah, God. God. Jesus. I'll marry you. Stir up love. Stir up not love, nor awake my love. Psalms of Solomon 8 verse 4. Until it pleases. So you've got to be sure of it. You have to be very, very sure. Marriage is not gimmicks. You have to make sure you are ready. You are matured enough. There are things you can handle. That's what the Bible says for this purpose. A man, not a boy. A man leaves his father. The word the man speaks of maturity. You have gone to the age of maturity. And one of the signs of maturity is ability to master your emotion. If you cannot be with a lady indoors and you can say, no, I won't do anything immoral with her, you have not mastered your emotion. A man who has mastered this emotion, even if a lady is naked, he can say, no. That's a bit to master your emotion. That's a matured person. Until you get to that point, you see, people think that marriage is the escape route for adultery. That's not true. For fornication, rather. That's not true. If you care, sir, I don't want to marry because I don't want to be sinned against God. That's not true. It takes discipline not to sin against God. Because once you get married and you start having sexual intercourse, in fact, you are in trouble. It opens you up to desires. So if you have no control before the time, and that's why if you see people who get married, who are already having sexual acts before marriage, one of the things he kills is trust. When you start sleeping with a girl before you marry her, and you marry her, you won't trust yourself. She won't trust you, you won't trust her. Why? She gave it to you, even when she was not supposed to. You gave it to her. 
when we're not supposed to. So you must be giving it to somebody else now. You stay out beyond such certain time. Where are you coming from? But if you did not do something like that with her, she didn't do something like that with you, it's not going to translate in her mind that you are doing it with somebody. I wish I was talking to somebody here. Can I say this to you? If you never have a moral act with a person before marriage, she will trust you with her life. She will defend you with her life. But there are some people, they don't just have immoral act with her, they have with her friends. They'll get the friend's number and start chatting. What kind of human being are you? They have the friend's number, they have the other friend's number. In fact, they even collected the number from her phone. See, don't, don't, don't tell your friend that we are talking. No. no, there's a way you do this thing, you sense. Your friend is very jealous. So, and, and that's one thing, yeah, no problem. No problem. Now, that's her friend for years that she just betrayed because of you. And you think that's a human being? No, you think a girl who does that is a human being? Carry your leg and run. Because what she would do to you, she betrayed her so easily. But the one that tells you, no, 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 that's my friend. That's a good person. But that actually, that's not the kind of person most young men want. That one does not understand. She's not, she's not what? She's not guy. She's not what's up. What's up? Twitter. So don't, don't engage anybody. Now, how many of you are engaged? You have a, somebody you have engaged. You have shown your parents and all of that. Let me see Okay. You have shown your parents and all. Let me see your hand up. Good. Your parents know them. All right. Now, you, have, you are engaged to somebody you have introduced to your parents. You have seen her parents. Let me see your hand. Okay. Hope you know you are engaged. Those of you raising your hand, I hope you know you are engaged. Right? Okay. Has it done on you that you are engaged? <laughs> now, what you, <laughs> now, I want you to know what you have entered. <laughs> As in, you, are, you have no alternative anymore. You know now. <laughs> there are so many of, <laughs> I won't say what I want to say. There are so many people who feel that's the best way to trap a woman. So they waste their time, waste their years, do all of that, and at the end of the day, they don't marry her. They feel it's a silly thing that most guys do, proposing to a lady. My father says something to me. He said, never tell a woman what you don't mean. My father said to me, never tell a woman what you don't mean. If you don't love a lady and she says, I love you, tell her thank you. It's not compulsory. You must say, I love you too when you don't mean it. If you don't love her, tell her, thank you. She's just a casual friend and she's using love tendencies. Put smile or tell her, please stop this. I don't like it. Never tell a lady what you don't mean. And my father said to me, a woman you have taken advantage of, if she cries, God and Satan hears her. Nobody can cry against you when you have not taken advantage of her. Nobody. Let her take your name anywhere. It's not going to work because you never took advantage. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, how, how, how do you propose? What's formal proposal? For, there's formal proposal. I like you. I want us to be friends. Let's have a relationship. That's formal. I'm not think there is informal proposal. You are not talking, no. Just your action. You have, you, have, you have asked her out. By your actions, by the way you are showing concern. In fact, there are some ladies, as far as they are concerned, they have bought ring for themselves. No. She's following you. Check her finger. She's wearing an engagement ring. You are thinking somebody else. It's your own, no. You didn't give her. She's telling people, no, 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 no. I'm taking I'm taking. Even you, you are happy for her. Say, thank God, oh, hey, God is awesome. Oh. You are the one that took her. You are the one. You are excited that, oh, thank God. God has, oh, God has visited you finally. Ask her, who is this guy? <laughs> she start laughing. <laughs> you say, you, know, you miss it, you don't know. <laughs> and you say, you don't know. I've seen that happen in church here. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that happen in church. 
Whatever I tell you is out of experience, counseling people. Some have seen, some have spoken to people. I've seen that happen in church here. I saw somebody from one of the departments wearing a ring. The ring was very regular. And she gives me envelope, sometimes 200 naira, 100, like that. Put in my hand, I'll pray for her. But I, every Sunday, regular, every Sunday. Oh, Papa, I'll collect, I'll pray. But I noticed that ring. And it was not on the wedding finger. It was on the middle finger. Of course, I know what that means. So I said, can you come with him? He's shy. I said, he's shy. He said, yes. I said, okay. What you do, him? Eh? What department is he? She told me. <laughs> and it's one of the department that follows me. You know them, eh? Okay. <laughs> so I said, he was describing the person. I said, I don't know him. I said, okay, what happens on Sunday when you are following me? Just come to me, give me the seat, and just point the person. This is not going to come now. We must catch him. Somehow we have to find him. So she brought the seat. I prayed with her. She said, <laughs> I said, which one? The tall one or the other? I said, the tall one. I said, ah! Ah, no wonder he cannot come. I said, that one, no, they marry. That guy can't marry. I know him. I don't understand. So I told the guy, I said, come. I told her to come. Hey! The guy died. What you go tell Papa? What you tell Papa? What you tell Papa? What you I pretended I didn't hear them. So we got upstairs, I sat down. I said, Oga, how far? <laughs> Papa, I don't understand. <laughs> Papa, I don't understand. I said, How far about her? He said, This girl, nah, our area she did. So I did sometimes. <laughs> the girl said, Eh? Area? I thought he said he loved me. He said, I love you. See, smallly, they try and encourage to serve God. Though. <laughs> Smallly, I they try and encourage to serve God. Me, me, ah, oh, it should not be worse. Hey, don't curse anybody here. Daddy told me, love me. This ring said, now me give you. Daddy, honest, you. I just encourage her, you know, because the kind of family she comes from, you know, polygamous home. I just encourage her. Sometimes I give her something. So you they think, say, I just so. You are not. He said, No, for waiting. No, ah, Papa, I, I'm your son now. Four one nine. <laughs> he said, He said, I will bring that. I, I see person, I won't marry. I will bring the girl to you now. The girl said, Ah, ah, daddy, she will come to mass in the ninth. We'll discuss the eleven. You will not drive up. I said, Ah, he's a Christian brother. That's no relationship because you didn't ask him. But what that young man did was not right. Just imagine if I was not aware and didn't break it down. She cried, she wept, she took out the ring and everything. And I sat him down when she left. I said, don't lead people on. He said, I'll just be nice. Of course, I knew he was not being nice. He was not being nice. Staying in somebody's house till 11 p.m. Check it now. Eh? 11 p.m. in the night. You both are not fans of the same football club. So what are you discussing till that time? Praise the Lord. That's one mistake people make. Another mistake. <laughs> hey. mm -mm. Another silly thing that single people do, single guys do, is dressing shabbily. When you dress well, that person you are in a relationship with will be proud of you. Now, the reason I smiled is that there are many things that are relative. There are people that believe having dreads is not a sin. They can have dreads. It's an opinion they have. Some believe that having tattoo it's not a, it's not wrong it's an opinion there but i want to ask a question can i 
Some believe putting on muzzle t-shirts and can you go get a job with a muzzle t-shirt and your tattoo on? You go for a job interview. Why? Why not? You can't? You cannot? Why? Huh? It's not. It's not. Okay. All right. Write this down. How you look determines who you hook. How you look. And it's not just about how you look. You know, have you seen some guys that really look very handsome but they are very dirty? They look really good but they are just dirty. And they just think this life is about them being spiritual. Being If somebody walks with my daughter to my house and says he wants to marry and I see him with a tinted hair. I don't care if you're an artist though. Even if you're an artist, the fact you were come to my house that day, be normal. Are you following what I'm talking about? After you people marry, continue because that may be what you do for a living. And I will not be critical of you. Are you following what I'm talking about? You are a Christian artist. You are trying to win certain class of people. You love the Lord. So you are trying to win certain class of people. Certain kind of people. And you are, I may not have a problem with that. But coming to my house with all of that. With a sagged trousers. And say sorry sir. It's what we do. You will go and do it outside. Because that is disrespectful. There are people in Genesis 41 verse 14. When God changed the story of Joseph and he was to appear before Pharaoh, the Bible says he changed his raiment and he had a shave. He shaved. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself. No word in scripture is immaterial. Change his raiment. Your appearance determines your acceptance. Change is raiment. You cannot be shabby. No woman is proud of a poorly dressed man. And you don't have to have too many clothes to dress well. No, you don't. Even if it's two, three, make sure they are always clean. You don't have to have too many clothes to dress well. So don't say, I don't have money, Papa. I can't dress up. That's not true. There was a time I had two trousers. No. Two trousers and three um, sleeves. And one tie. And th that tie. The tie was very tiny. Looked like a snake. It was very weightless. Just going like that. And that was all I had. But it was always neat. Always neat. Very neat. I'll put that on. Then somebody now bless me with a suit. No, coat, not suit. Bless me with a coat. And I'll knock the coat. Oh Lord, have mercy. Knock the coat. Wear the tie. I had a big Bible like the Ark of Noah. Go in my Bible like that. Even inside heat. <laughs> Tie my neck like a suicide rope. Tie my neck, I'll pray. I was extremely. So I was always neat. neat. And my wife would commend me. He said, You look neat. Now, hear me. There was a day I went to. I went to. Um, there's a place in Benin. It's called Rokota Hall. I don't know if it's here operating now. It does? Okay. If you get to, how do I describe it? If you get to Ring Road in Benin, that, um, how many of you know Benin City? Okay. The round, you know Rokota Hall? Okay. There was a day I went to Rokota Hall. I went to preach. I was ministering, ministering, ministering. The power of God came on me. I took my suit. The biggest mistake of my life. 
My only suit. It was the days we were watching Benny Hinn a lot. I threw my suit into the crowd. A guy caught the anointing and went on with my suit. My only suit. Hey! After service. I said they were looking for the guy like this. Who know a house? Who know a house? Who know a house? Why brother with me say even you say why you throw the suit now? As it was the spirit, we spirit. May spirit go find the suit for you now. Why? I got home that day, I cried. I'm being honest with you. Tears came out of my eyes. That was my only suit. Morning, evening, night. That was my only suit. I can change the white inside. I can change to the cream colored um, shirt, but I can't change the suit. The guy contacted the anointing. At least return the place, the suit to. He just contacted the anointing and just took the anointing and the suit home. That's how I lost that suit. Amen. I lost that suit. I remember the mama said, Where's your suit? <laughs> I said, God was moving. <laughs> I threw the suit. And um, the young man cut the anointing and took the suit. He said, I don't understand. <laughs> Where is this suit? I said, See, God was moving. <laughs> I threw the suit. Yeah. Suit, I understand. God is moving, I understand. How did suit connect? At least. I watch it on television now. Somebody threw suit. But the one that man threw on television, they returned it. This one, they returned. He just left. He left the church. Left the Rokota Hall. Left with the suit. That's how the suit. I lost my suit. Oh, my suit. <laughs> that was my first personal suit. I lost it. May God forgive you. <laughs> Amen. So dress well. Understand colors. Understand events. You have a dinner. You know what to wear. You have to study that. Women are proud of you when they know that you know how to dress to an event. I mean, it's a dinner going on. You know how to appear. There's a wedding going on. You know how to appear. There's this going on. You know how to appear. You are coming to the house to see your father. You know how to appear. You appear all responsible. You appear all nice, all calm. It matters a lot. Another silly thing single guys do is being extra possessive of a girl they are not married to. Being extra possessive of a girl they are not married to. Who is that guy? What are you, what are you telling him? What is he telling you? You have no right to ask anybody you are not married to that. If a woman truly loves you, a girl truly cares about you, she'll be loyal to you. If you have not won her enough to make her loyal, no matter how many times you beat her up, she cannot be loyal. You have to win her. When you have actually touched her in a spot and she has seen care, she has seen honesty, a woman cannot be loyal to a man who has a common trait that other men have. Men cheat, you cheat. Men lie, you lie. No, she wants to be loyal to that person that is different from the natural, the ordinary man. So all this possessiveness, you are angry. You see her in the midst of people, you are angry. It shows that you have a complex issue. Because if you know what you carry, if she walks away, she loses. If you know what you carry. If you know what you carry. I can't imagine. Right from courtship. I can't imagine. I've never had that kind of talk. Say maybe a brother is talking to a mama then. I'm not coming. I walk away. She saw that. He said, you didn't even ask me what you are discussing. I said, ah. If you tell me, you tell me. If you don't tell me. Where will I? But no, that's how you stand there. God, they talk now, they talk. <laughs> 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 
why when they talk, I can't come now. You can't keep quiet. Talk. Guy. <laughs> so don't be extra possessive. Don't be. No matter how she in fact, there are some people that want to just pull your legs. They want to make you feel jealous. They are doing nothing with the person. They want to make you feel jealous. They want to make themselves overly important. Are you for what I'm talking about? They want to make themselves overly important. Somebody just said hi to them. The next day they said, this guy, I don't know why he's always disturbing me. He said hi. This guy's already disturbing me. I don't even know. Ah, me, I will not. Hi, hi. That's what the guy said. So if you're not wise, you've become an enemy to that person. Now you're beefing or quarreling with a young man innocently. You have no problem with any man who is trying to come around your lady. It's your lady you have a problem with. Because for a man to come around is because indirectly you said you're available. Are you following me? Are you following what I'm talking about? Don't be extra possessive. Amen. So I'm not going to talk to you again. Go and meet him. Go and meet him. Say so you were talking to him. You left me. I was going. Go and meet him. You are a boy. You are a child. Some girls have gone as far as beating any boy here or a brother here that raises his hand on a lady with all due respect no you are not an animal I'm thinking because animals don't beat their spouse are you aware have you seen a he goat hitting a, a she goat hitting a he goat you have not seen it you have not seen a she goat a she goat will hit a he goat the he goat will not see anything it will just be going like this I know what I'm looking for. 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 You will never see the he, a he You can't see a he goat. A he goat fight with a he goat. Stay around animals. Just watch them. The she goat does everything. The he goat doesn't respond. But once it's a he goat and a he goat, they lock horns. Animals don't beat their spouse. Then you, you are beating a girl. So you are lower than an animal. You are beating up a lady. You don't, you don't lift your hand on a woman. You don't lift your hand on a lady. You don't even push her. They are too fragile to be touched. Bible calls, Even the Bible acknowledges it. They say deal with them according to knowledge. Because they are the weaker vessels. It says that's what you say. Papa, I don't know. That's my weakness. That's my weakness. I just see myself beating. That's not true. It's not a weakness. You are beating her because you feel there's nothing she can do. Yeah. It, why that's your weakness why have you not beaten up a soldier See, Papa, I don't know just my weakness uh, the soldier just insulted me I just slapped him it's my weakness then our grace is a witness you be just just look at a soldier just with uniform just slapped him then wait for what happens to you amen Now, there's a difference between being jealous and being possessive. When you are... A woman can like it when you are jealous. You're like, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? Oh, she knows you care about her. But when it gets to a point, you now start detailing and talking to her like a child. I called you. Your number was shrink me, 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 me. It was busy. You didn't pick my call. Who were you talking to? In fact, I, I saw you were online. You were online. 1 a.m. Who were you chatting with? What were you doing awake 1 a.m. checking your own phone to know what was online? Those are immaterial things that you don't need. You understand now. When you start paying school fees, you won't have that time to check whether she's online. When you start paying school fees, when your children tell you that entrance as payment expires tomorrow, you won't know if you have a phone. You will sell it actually. It's people that are not busy that are bothering over being possessive or not. Silly thing that single guys do. <laughs> is dating a lady because of her status or her looks. Mm -hmm. 
dating a lady because of her status or her looks. There are people whose mentality and mindset is that they must have a relationship with only a certain kind of people. Number one, they have to be a working class lady. I can't date somebody who's not a working class. No, 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 no. I don't want to invest on anybody. I don't want. Ah, guess I've dealt with me. Oh. Guess I've dealt with me. Anybody I want to, you must have your own money. Nobody dealt with you. You were just stupid. You were plain stupid. Amen. You met a girl, you bought her a phone from a phone, you paid her rent from her rent, you give her money to give her parents from her parents, you bought her. She said, ah, there's this latest iPhone. You know, they don't act like they need though. They'll just be telling you. Ah, there's this iPhone that my friend just bought. It's a lie. They're trying to make you feel competitive. That if she had a friend who the guy could buy for you too, you want to prove that you are somebody. Eh, they bought for her. Say yes. What kind of phone? Say iPhone. Say yeah. <laughs> Rubbish. In your heart, you are saying, hey, God, 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 God. This guy, while I went, I so... He says, how much is the phone? You now mention there. Maybe you say 200,000. And your account, you are 205. <laughs> how many of you know there are some people, some young men, they will count that 200 and leave 5K? Uh, am I saying the truth? Just to prove a point. Sir, the right thing to tell her is that no problem. When, mo when money comes, eh? you buy. Oh, please, please, no, please, if you don't buy it, if you don't buy it from me. In fact, there's one boy, eh? his name is Jonah, he's offering me the phone because of the love I have for you. I said, no. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> You're not even smart. He said, eh? He's offering the phone. You said no. Ah, that's not fair now. Don't break people's heart like that. Collect it and come. There's nobody offering that anything. So, when you marry somebody because you work, this person is a working class person, or because of the status or the looks, favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Proverbs 31. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Any girl you see today who's so pretty and looking good may not look like that in the next five years. So that's the reason why you're attracted to her when she evolves and become mammally and triple in size. And she becomes five times of what she was. And now she looks like where two or three are gathered. Your love is gone. Your, your affection is gone. Are you listening? Because it was not built on a solid foundation. There are some young men that already have a kind, a kind, a class. There's nothing wrong with it. You must have the kind of person you want. There's nothing wrong. It's not demonic. But when that's what guides you, that's what drives you, that's what controls you, you are going to keep making mistakes. You know why? You are going to meet more than one person that is like what you like. Oh, how do I explain this? You like a lady who's very tall. How many of you know there are many tall ladies? That's what drives you. So that's why you see people entering multiple affairs. Multiple affairs. Because the external is what attracts them. The external is what motivates them. Some like a lady that's well shaped. And in this generation now where people do surgery. So you're going to be entering from one relationship to another. At the end of the day, you just, you kill yourself. My father said, when a man dies because of a woman, on his burial day, hire two sets of people. Hire some to be laughing and some to be crying. And let others just be observing. Let it be a mixed multitude. Because that was a wasted death. Nobody dies for a woman. Anybody who you go for because of her content and not her content, very soon you are going to see better containers. You are going to see better containers. A wise man said the beautiful ones are not yet born. So never go for a woman because of how she looks. Her looks are fine. Her looks are okay. But that should not be your propelling factor. 
That should not be the, the force that drives you. Beauty is not external. Beauty is internal. That's why a lady can look not pretty, but by the time she meets a good man, her beauty comes out. Because beauty is not external. Beauty is internal. It takes time to bring out beauty. It takes time to make somebody look good. Even you as a young man, if you meet a woman that gives you peace, you are going to look good. Now you are looking somehow. Because you are in a relationship with somebody, you are fighting, you are worried. You are, you are not happy. There are young men that have gone into alcohol. They drink and drink because they feel they are in a relationship. Can you imagine? He has no child yet. He's depressed because of a woman. But beauty is inside. You bring it out. You want to marry somebody not because of her looks, not because of her status. Not because how in quotes. And that's what many people don't know. When a lady is well dressed, can I tell you something now? A lady puts on clothes. A responsible man doesn't tell her you look sexy. No. A wise lady who is deep will not respect you. This clothes looks good on you. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't compliment her body. Compliment what she's wearing. Don't say, wow. Look at your shape. Any deep lady knows that all you care about is her body. Say, this cloth is really nice on you. It looks beautiful. It ends there. So when it's all about how she looks, the, uh, her shape, and all of that, it's sending signals. She will tell you, okay, you don't, you don't get, listen, let me tell you how women are. She will smile. Wow. Look at your hips. Wow. <laughs> he said, thank you. Look at your hips. Look at your hips. So he likes girls with hips. Okay. Are you following me? The next time somebody with hips is passing by, she's looking at you. She's looking at you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Come out your eye. Yeah, because you, you, you sent a message. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Women don't listen to what you are saying. They listen to what they are feeling. Let me give you an instance. If you marry a woman, okay, let's say you're in a relationship. If you have an appointment for 4 o'clock, you come 5 o'clock, do you know what a woman will tell you? You don't love me. Eh? If you say you call her tonight, you didn't call her tonight, you called her in the morning, you don't love me. Everything you do wrong, you don't love her. She equates whatever mistake or error to love. That's why God advised us, say love your wife. Because everything you do, that is how they feel. They, they are not operating based on what is happening. They are operating based on how they feel. I'm not saying you should date people you don't find attractive. But the beauty must start from inside. When a beautiful woman is in the same house with you, and she has no respect, no value, no regard for you. Her beauty disappears before your eyes. She has no character. Her beauty. Have you seen celebrities? Celebrities. Popular celebrities. Artists and the rest who are out of marriage. They are so pretty. But because they are so arrogant and proud, the man does not see that again. That's what attracted him. But when she got in, the man now knew that there's something more than beauty. So you see a woman who is so beautiful, a guy who is so handsome, divorced. Divorced. Yeah, divorce. Because a time comes that what keeps people together is the content. Not the container. It's the content. It's what they have inside. Because after all the beauty and after all the, ex uh, uh, the exteriors, you've got to discuss. You've got to have a conversation. You have to show some level of respect for each other. And when that is not in place, they start having problems. They start having problems. They start having problems. They start having problems. You hear that the man is with another woman and you, you are trying to compare the person he's with. with the, you, you, you can't balance it. You are trying to compare because that's the one that gives attention. That's the one that listens. That's the one that, you know, is ready to have a conversation. Yes. That's the truth. 
the one that's ready to have a conversation because women like conversations. Even if you know everything in this world, still listening. There are people that will go out on a date. Some guys they will talk, 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 when the lady says something, ah, of course I know I'm not, I know I'm, I know I'm, I know I'm, I know I'm. This is not that guy. He's my friend. I used to know him before. Very stupid guy like that. Very idiot guy like that. Uh, well, that, oh, that one. You know everything. It gives them signals. No matter what you know, keep quiet and let them talk. Even when you assume that what the person wants to say is what you already know, still listen. Still listen. Or else you start losing steam. And when a woman doesn't like you, there are signs you can tell. That's the truth. Have you seen somebody that will not reply your message? You send a message, the person will reply you in the morning. And yet when both of you are together, she's with her phone all the time. When both of you are together, the person is always on the phone. But how did you reply your message? That's a signal. That's a signal that no road. Don't even bother coming far. So don't go for the containers. Another silly mistake that guys make is rebuking a lady publicly. You don't correct a lady publicly. She's not going to hear what you are saying. You don't correct a lady publicly. Public correction, public rebuke, public chastening is destructive to the feminine agenda. It affects their mind. They are more bothered about what people will see them as, what people will say about them than what you just said. She's coming down. Hey, sorry. You say, people are there. Say, you see, you see. I told you 4, 4 p.m. I told you 4 p.m. Look at time now. 5. Let's go. You'll be surprised that whole outing is spoiled. Any correction you want to give to a woman, put it in a joke. I didn't see any discussion. I said correction. You can discuss normally. You can say things normally. But any correction, put it in a joke. Glory be to God. Criticism is criticism. There's something I don't like. Embarrassing public, somebody publicly, you call it constructive criticism. You don't embarrass people publicly and say it's constructive. Are you listening? You don't embarrass somebody publicly. You say hey, we, uh, we can criticize anybody. When well, you embarrass people, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. If you cannot wait, call her aside. If you can't wait till you are done from the event, right about that, call her aside. My wife and I don't have issues because there are things that she might do wrong. I want to tell her. I say, why well, communicate it? In a joke. You just laugh. She'll say, hey, why didn't you tell me now? I've passed across my message. I've passed across my message. Silly thing, single guy. Do let me give you two more, then we pray. We have, a, we have a short discussion, then we pray. Failure to develop themselves. Failure to develop themselves. No lady is going to honor you or respect you or even be with you when she's more developed than you. When a woman has to condition herself, she has to quarantine herself mentally and verbally to talk to you. Because you are, you are not up to her level. She has to come down. Very soon you lose steam. You lose steam. She's more exposed than you. She's more exposed than you. She's more educated than you. She's more knowledgeable than you. You've got to develop yourself. You have to go back to school. Go back to school. We are in a muddy society. 
you have to go back to school go back to school if you are in any craft any talent you are you know the lord has given to you know it well know that thing you are doing very well Oh, you, even if you're a footballer, she's a doctor. That's your football game. That's your football talent. Know it well. Failure to develop themselves. Read books. We are in an era of computer. You have to be computer literate. Because when you stand to talk and you are informed in that area of your endeavor, in that your career and you are speaking and your wife is there she wants to have a level of honor she wants to have a level of a level of pride when you get back you say ah see we were just giving them you're just giving them i'm proud of you you're just giving them because why you have mastered that act well you're good in your craft so if you are going to, you are going to be a, 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 um, a hairstylist, a fashion designer, anything you are doing, learn. Don't just learn what's around. Go online. Know about brands. Know where they are located. Know their style. Now even if you are sleeping, you are a fashion designer, even if you are sleeping, if you touch any material, you know the brand. Without even looking at it, just touching it, you know. Be good in your craft. Nobody wants to be proud of anybody who doesn't know nothing. All you do, you stop into money, maybe internet or something. You stop into money, you have money, all you do, you buy a car, you drink, you go out, you do this. Very soon, people are going to just lose value for you because what do you bring to the table? Develop yourself. Tell somebody, develop yourself. Tell somebody, develop yourself. Tell somebody, develop yourself. Say, develop yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. That's the truth. See, the crisis in Nigeria today is because some people somewhere, eh, somewhere, some people are mentally bankrupt. They don't know anything. So they can't give what they don't have. Can I tell you the generation we are in now? The generation we are in now is where children will come to their parents and say, do this assignment for me. And just imagine if you are dull. That child is in trouble because you, you take the anger on the child. Now this one you don't know. Now this one. Now daddy do it. Are you for, my son will come to me. He doesn't ask me if I say, daddy, let me do this, um, this thing. I mean, they just walk like that. They expect you to know it. And you know, when we are young, our fathers we are always brilliant. Brilliant person in my class. Until a question comes. Develop yourself in your endeavor. Today, there are certificate courses, even if you are a graduate. You know, I've done a lot of certificate courses. When we were having the corona, um, the lockdown, I was doing some online courses. I was doing some online courses in oil and gas. This some um, in public administration. I was doing some one month, some three weeks, some two months. It was a good time. Everybody was at home. Life waits for nobody and finally amen final mistake that most single guys make is Don't laugh. Refuse her to understand hygiene. Your health is your wealth. Don't 
the most de- uh, you see when you see me talking like this and I'm calm it's because I'm counting my words because anytime I'm doing a program there are certain bloggers who watch from beginning to end they are just looking for one thing that they will blow so you see me I'm calm I'm taking my time One of the people with terrible hygiene are smokers. Eh. Their breath is terrible. True of us. That's where I'll stop. I won't say anything more than that. Avoid smoking. Avoid it. If you must maintain a good hygiene, avoid smoking. You damage your system when you do that. You'll be surprised to find out there are people who are in departments in church who are still addicted to weed and they will explain it. Don't say, Papa, weed is the blessing, the blessing of God. It's not God that blessed the herbs. Can you imagine that? If we are going to go like that with scripture, then we are going to have a lot of problems. Yes. We are going to go, God bless um herbs you know so because god bless herbs so you can just smoke it See, it's good for medicine right lot's wife turned to salt so we should not eat salt because anytime you are eating salt you are eating lot's wife that's not scripture is interpreted so avoid smoking and avoid anything that has to do with alcohol you may not like what i'm saying avoid it that's the first form of personal hygiene your intake not even those not what's around you you can clean everything around you but your intake is the first personal hygiene what goes into you what you take in you've got to be careful your hygiene is important There are young men who are worried and they don't know why a particular person left them. You are beaten now. You are worried she can never love you. Because anytime you open your mouth, Uzziah comes out. When you are wondering why she can never love you, your breath is terrible. You just wake up in the morning, you don't brush. That's how you just go on. From there, take a bottle of alcohol, drink. Your life has started. You don't take your bath. You lift your hand. Your armpit is a mess. I'm telling you. It's a mess. You look terrible. You cannot attract anybody in the city. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just counting my... I'm, I feel like I'm... I feel like in bondage. Eh? Because, no. Those watching, you know, there are people that are just, there are people that need to make money. So if Suleiman is not in their content, it's not complete. Now I'm telling you, they are bloggers. So if you see me talking like that, I'm, I'm counting, I'm trying to say what will not be taken out of contest. Amen. But I'm telling you the truth, there are people who have lost their relationship. It wasn't a spirit wife. It wasn't a spirit husband. The guy was at Biwe. He was Otiku. And <laughs> terrible. So your hygiene has to be good. And I wonder why some of you young men, you are 35, you are 36. I don't know if you're actually doing still single at 36, though. What's that? Yeah, there are some people who are still single at that age. Many. And you're just young. You're bearded. You have young man like you. You've dyed your beard to gold. So my young man has turned, dyed it to gray. You're not a singer. You're not a musician. You're not an actor. Nothing. At your young age, you're inviting gray hair. You dyed it. And I see someone ask, I say, what is this for? I just like it. You like hair being great? Say, yes, I just like it. 
you actually sat down you paid money I called a brother in church one time I went in one of our churches I said come you left your house you went to a barber shop you sat down you paid money and they took dye on your beard white as what they just want to be different to them that is a brand they are not singers they are not footballers they are not actors your hygiene matters a lot don't bleach your skin there are guys amen amen praise the lord we shall overcome someday we're going to be free to talk <laughs> or we'll do some programs and we'll not do it live so that we can just talk you understand me and there are so many things i want to say but when i i go through my i'm just with my phone at times something will just pop i'll just see my name somewhere and i'll see that i said something i say ah, that's not the way i said it now they will sit down they will analyze it and they will, they will make money so i don't want to keep giving them money yeah because you see if you want to insult me eh, pay me i will help you insult me i will put all the insults on my head so don't you don't have to bother if you want to insult me just pay me money then i will give you a lot of things to use in insulting me but now you are insulting me for free you are making money i'm not making money and i'm the one being used to generate that money so i'm going to stop that that's why when i speak over sensitive issues i'm very careful i count my words so that they don't twist anything i've said but i'm going to say it again avoid bleaching <laughs> You heard me? Okay. <laughs> Praise God. When you are dressed, you are going out. Use perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the Lord a clap offering. We want to pray. Now. If you have a question for me, you can ask me. You can ask me. I want to see how we can get out of here. I don't want it to get dark before we leave. Okay? The next meeting we're going to have is not going to be live. I promise you. All right? So we can say things. We can talk. And um, it's not going to be live. I'll make sure it's not live. We'll have a quiet brothers meeting. It's not going to go live on TV. So we can have a discussion. We can have time to talk. Now, do you know one of the problems people have? Um, I'm going to say this. I, I don't care. There are, one of the problems people have is in relationships is touching. Right? Eh? Kissing. Caressing. There are people that actually do not know if it's right or wrong. As far as they are concerned, they believe that what's not wrong is what is not right is sexual intercourse. They believe you can do everything else. Are you following what I'm saying? They have done everything else except that one. So they are confused. Is it right? Should a brown man do this with a woman? Should. First Corinthians seven. First Corinthians. The three says, He that is married careth for the things of the world and how he may please his wife. He that is married, hold on. Okay, yeah. Let's start from verse 3. There's something I want to show you. 
let the wife first corinthians 7 verse 3 let the wife let the husband render the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto who verse 4 let's read verse 4 together the wife had not power of her own body but the husband and likewise also read loud now the husband had not power of his own body but verse 5 defraud ye not the other except it be what with consent for the time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together against satan again that satan tempt you not for your incontinence okay let me tell you what that place means the place means that when you are married as a married man you have no power over your body your body belongs to your wife your wife body belongs to who when you are when you are your wife's body belongs to you your body belongs to your wife so if your wife's body belongs to you and yours to her when you are married when you are not married the reverse is a body does not belong to you body does not belong to her are you listening so you cannot kiss her because whether you like it or not kissing is foreplay it's part of sex yes if you want to do degree you start with prelim if you don't want degree don't do prelim so you don't don't do it at all the hurry to do it is a sign that you are not really serious because if you are really serious to marry this person you will wait so that settles the the, the worry of relationships let me say this to you anybody that you are not married to and you are sleeping with you don't love forget it you don't love because love is sacrifice so what are you sacrificing you want to marry this girl you can't sacrifice to wait for her you don't love her all right what are the questions don't kiss don't kiss it is wrong i know some say, papa what of hug what of hug there is hug and there is hug we know the hug in church oh bless you bless you but the hug you are talking about you know it that one is wrong let me take a few questions okay is that sound on get the sound on for them hallelujah amen okay daddy this is a question the person said what is mostly the causes of you as a young man always having older women coming after you older women coming after you i think it's, it's relative if you say older women is relative there are young women everywhere there are young women everywhere we must not rule out the fact that we live now in a very promiscuous world it's a promiscuous world there are women today also who have older men coming after them the people that come after them are married people the first thing i would say about that is spiritual is spiritual the devil wants to ruin you wants to destroy you or they already know you have a history they know you have a history of being with older that's what i want to ask that person who, who sent that question have you ever been with an older woman before if you ever been with one she told her friends nobody comes after somebody without making inquiry yeah they'll make inquiry daddy thank you for this opportunity for a brother who has found a lady he loves and he discovers she is not materialistic daddy what is the best time for that brother to open up to start spending for our upkeep to start spending yes for our upkeep in that such relationship why why would you spend for our upkeep are you a father you can give a lady a gift but the word upkeep 
is the responsibility of a parent. Alright? Upkeep is responsibility. You can give her a gift. You can make her feel comfortable. Especially now you know she's not materialistic. She doesn't bother you. Give her a gift once in a while. The best time to start spending for her upkeep is when you marry her. The day you get married to her, she becomes your responsibility. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. By the grace of God, I have an opportunity to be a hairstylist. So you are what? Hairstylist. Hairstylist, okay. So I do change styles almost every month or sometimes every week. So is it right for me to do my hair the way I like? But to me, I feel like it's, it's like... It's a way of showcasing my hands. Advert. Or, or advert. Yes. No, I don't know. Sir. It's not wrong. Okay. Thank you, sir. If you know that's your craft, it's not wrong. You see, we must learn to accept people the way they are and not be critical of them. Somebody will see him, maybe see him cream up his hair, and the person doesn't know he's trying to sell his craft. So there's nothing wrong. So long, you know, the Bible says if our heart does not condemn us, we have peace with God. Mm. If your heart does not condemn you, it doesn't matter who condemns you, but if your heart tells you, you are not wrong. You have peace with God. So there's nothing wrong in that. Yes. That is a question here. A girl I consistently see in my dream. Does a what? A girl I consistently see in my dreams. Does that justify divine approval? Wake up. Or marriage? If you keep seeing a girl in your dream, what do you do? You wake up from the dream at all. Don't build. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that a dream can come through multitude of business. There's a way you can think and think and think about a girl. You dream about her. That's not. <laughs> that's the truth. That's not, the whole, that, that, that's not a yastic. God can speak through dream. Quite all right. But when it becomes persistent, 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 Abba, that's the only thing in your life. You're not dreaming about your future. You're not dreaming about your next level. It's about a lady. When you keep thinking about her, you dream about her. So don't build your life on that. The first proof of divine approval is peace. Peace. And peace is not in a hurry. If you are peaceful, you are not, you are not in a hurry. It doesn't matter how long it takes. That person is yours. It doesn't matter whether you speak or you don't speak. That person is yours. Once you feel peace. So, if you keep dreaming about somebody, you wake up. Is that all? Yes, sir. The, the, the Bible said Mary is honorable and the bed be undefined. But a situation whereby the bed has been defied before the marriage, is it reasonable to call it a marriage or which other name can we call it? The situation where... The Bible said the mar marriage is honorable and the bed undefined. Mm -hmm. But a situation whereby the both parties, they have defied the bed before the marriage. So should we call it marriage or is there any other name we can call it as a Christian? The Bible didn't say, listen, you are confusing yourself. The Bible, hold on. The Bible didn't say if the bed is defied, don't call it marriage. The Bible says if the bed is not defied, the marriage is honorable. So once the bed is defied, it's still marriage, but the honor is gone. That's what I was telling you. I said, do not go to bed with a person you intend to marry. Because the honor, that respect she has for you is gone. Even if she kneels down to greet you 20 times, there's something that tells her that you can't be trusted. Are you following what I'm talking about? So the honor is what is gone. It's, you can still go and marry the person, of course. But the honor is gone. Marriage is honorable. Hebrews 13, 4, I think. Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. So when the bed is not defiled, there is honor in the marriage. Do you understand me, sir? Huh? Woe mongers and adulterers God will judge. So when you want to have honor, respect before your spouse, you must keep yourself before that person. When you sit to talk to her, you sit to counsel her, she will listen to you because you are a man. You have the qualities of a man, which is discipline. Sir, you are dating a girl and in the course of dating, you discover that the girl has a baby and hid the issue from you. What do you do? Break it. Thank you, sir. Next. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Anything that has insincerity and lies should not be advanced. Once you notice insincerity, you notice lie. If she tells you, see, I have somebody, I have this, I have a child, 
Love covers multitude of sins. Anybody can make mistakes. In fact, a child is not even a mistake. A child is a blessing. You can go ahead. So long you know that's the truth. But somebody never told you. Because if she didn't tell you about the child. And you find out. There are many things you don't know. So it's wrong. Sir, is it right for you to marry a girl that a prophet or a prophet tells, tells you she is your wife. But you don't love her? No. No, don't use the word love. Don't use the word love. You can marry somebody you don't really love. Are you aware? Eh? Husband, love, love. It didn't say men, love your women. Husband, love. Husband, love. You can love who you marry. You are only to love who you marry. You can have a good feeling for somebody. You can have a mutual feeling for somebody and it's not love. You can actually like somebody so much, but that's not somebody that you want to shut your eyes and be crazy about. But in love, in marriage, that love overwhelms you. I've seen guys who saw a lady, they were comfortable, they were friends, it metamorphosed into marriage, but in the marriage, the love was crazy. Because that's actually when God says you should have even permitted to love somebody. Husband, love your wife. He didn't say love them in courtship. If you love each other before you get married, it is perfect. But love is not the first yastic for marriage. Because you can love a wrong person. So love is not the first yastic. I've seen that. Do, do you know that I'm robber, I'm robber, crook, has somebody who loves him? You're not aware? But she doesn't love the right person. So that day, there's something wrong when you push love forward. The first thing you see in a relationship is the fear of God. That's the first. Number two, compatibility. Number three, a personal character. She's not just doing that to you. She's doing that to those around you. She respects them. Then four, love. Love is always number four. It's not number one. Don't push that. Don't, don't, you can't sleep with her because of her. You can't sleep without her. You, you, you're always thinking about her. That's infatuation. That's a feeling. And that feeling can die. I told you the last time I was having a general singles meeting. You remember Amno and Taman? In 2 Samuel chapter 3. Huh? The Bible says, I'm not loved her man that he could not sleep. He loved her like his own soul. He became sick. He was sick of Tama. He said, but I'm not had a friend. A terrible friend. And the friend said, tell your father that you are not well. He should tell Tama to come cook for you. When Tama came and cooked for him, the Bible says, he raped her. After raping her, he said the hatred he hated her was more than the love he loved her. You see that? So he can change. It's not reliable. What is reliable is the fear of God. So don't just be carried away. You see somebody, you are crazy about the person. And now, you may not understand now, but you advance in life, you get to see what I'm talking about. Amen. Okay, daddy, upstairs. The person said... That they have been, I was in a relationship with a lady for six years, and I happened to be her first lover. But she disrespects me, and she doesn't give me. You are, you are not reading the notes. Are you sure it's you? No, Daddy. Um, <laughs> the person could not, the write up could not come well, so you just had to. So I saw just some. The write up didn't come well, so you yeah, understand what they wanted to write. I had to Are you sure I'm not talking for yourself? No, no, the person is here, Daddy. The person is here, sir. Okay, tell me, so, summarize, summarize. Okay, so he said the lady wasn't respecting him, so he met another lady after six years of dating that lady, met someone else who was giving her the maximum respect if he feels is necessary for a relationship. Now he has told the previous girl that he's no longer interested. Ah! But the lady refuses, saying he, they've spent a long time together. He, she's not ready to go. Him say he has left her, but the lady says she has not. So he said he's having issues with that, daddy. He will have issue. <laughs> Six years? I think respect is relative because there are some... Look at this. Look at this. We need to discuss that kind of thing with the person. When did you notice? Because, sir... 
If somebody has no respect, it won't take you six years to find out. Who agrees with me? The first year you find out. So, you may have seen somebody else. Now you are looking for an excuse. You will stay there. She shall respect you. She shall respect Six years? No way. If she didn't have respect, you'd have left the first year. How many of you know that if a lady is rude and disrespectful, you can't stay one year? Are you the general overseer of relationship? You can't stay one year. Six years. I don't believe that story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't believe. There's something you are not telling us. <laughs> said yes, sir. Now, I don't believe. I, I'm not saying he's lying, but I don't believe that story. Six years is too long for you to suddenly use disrespect as an excuse to opt out. I don't believe that story. I don't. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. Don't be offended, please. Don't be offended, whoever you are. Don't be offended. But I don't, I don't believe it. Papa, please. Uh, in a situation whereby you are into a relationship with a lady, and uh, both family knew about the relationship, and uh, it's been revealed. Some people say they sober of you in a dream, when they, and this and that. And uh, when the thing started, the lady was obeying the young guy, but all of a sudden, she, the thing, she changed character. And the young guy asked her what happened. She said it was then. But now she's behaving. She doesn't obey her, him any longer. Who is the young guy? <laughs> you know. All right. There's something I don't understand about this respect. Stand up. When you say the lady doesn't respect anymore, what do you mean? What do you mean? Before, when you give her instructions, she will do it. But now, she will give you suggestions or reasons why she will not do some instruction you give to her. So what's wrong in that? The Bible didn't say that a woman should submit to you in courtship. <laughs> Wait. A woman doing that... You see, may you not be deceived. A woman doing everything you say doesn't mean she's submissive. She can do all that to enter the house. Yeah. She can do all that. She will kneel down 20 times. You tell her to sweep from here to here. She will sweep to the road. You say, just wash this trouser. She will wash the whole wardrobe. She has a target. Love women where they are themselves. <laughs> Can I say something to you? Let me tell you something. How many of you know from what you have seen in church? You know, you know I love mama very well. Okay. Do you know some things I tell her to do? She argue with me. Yeah, she'll say why. I don't have a dundee as a wife. I say, go and drop that thing. She'll say, why? She wants to know. Women like that, that's not being rude. Are you for what I'm talking about? There was somebody I was angry with, and I saw Mama talking to the person. And I was angry with this person. And I came, I said, Why are you talking to that person? Don't you know I'm angry? He said, I don't understand. You are the one angry with him. Now I'm not angry with him. That's, a, that's an original person. But you know, somebody else will see that as disrespect. We like games, and that's immaturity. Maturity is ability to take people for who they are. That's why I ask you, what is the disrespect? If you say she abused you, she call you a fool, call you an idiot. Mm, that's too far. Are you following what I'm talking about? But just asking questions, say this thing you say I should do. Why? That's not being disrespectful. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain? There are some things before a woman does it, she wants both of you to discuss it. Because women see farther than you. You can give an instruction that will boomerang. She wants to know. There are times I'll tell my wife, I want to buy something. I will let buy it. She said, do we need it? I said, I want to buy it. Say, okay. She said, my husband, I can't say, okay, when you want to waste money. Do you know if I hold back? After about a week or two, ah, it just dawns on me. I say, yay. You know, and we don't come back to tell them that she was right. No, a man doesn't come back to say, ah, I'm happy I listen to you. No, no, no. no. Men, don't, men don't talk like that. We have some ego. 
You say it's like this thing. You say it's like it makes sense. <laughs> Do you get that, right? So what I'm saying is there is a difference between being rude and being sincere. Okay. There are people that are insultive. Have you seen ladies that you have a little misunderstanding? They'll send you messages and eh? it's like you should go and commit suicide. Plain rude. Abuse, call you names. Those are terrible. Those are people you cannot even go because it's going to be so toxic. Are you listening? It's going to be so toxic. But you tell somebody come by 4 p.m. She says, I don't think I can come by 4 p.m. Can we make it 6? When I tell you 4 p.m., it should be 4 p.m. She has something she's doing. So you're not going to say that person is not submissive. She's just being herself. Than the one that you say come by 6. With 3 o'clock be okay. What of 2? You say, ah, this girl, she has respect. Let her get into the house. I wedded somebody in this church. I wedded somebody here. Eh? When they came to the office and I was talking to the guy, she was on her knees throughout. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Okay, Papa. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. So the guy was like, that's how she is. So she's very respectful. I said, hey, hey, this is traffic light. This is a signal. She said, no, Papa, that's how she is. So she said, my mom, she would. They're in the battle now. As I speak to you now, his mother cannot enter his house. He does not even take my call. No, he can't, he can't. If he wants to talk to me, he goes outside. Papa, you know, Jesse Bede house, oh, Jesse Bede house. Fight. And you, the contrast is so, we, we can't put it together. This same person that was being so, learn to take people the way they are. Okay? There are things we call disrespect. But when people are asking you questions, don't be in a relationship with somebody who, 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 who says okay to everything you tell her. I had this one. Mm -hmm. How about this? This? this. Mm -hmm. She's not going to have any contribution to your life. She cannot do nothing. But somebody will say, "You see, I went out to go and play football, so I'm coming home." She said, "By nine, you go to the house by nine p.m. Which field? What? Where were you playing football in nine p.m.? Where did you get the lights from? Don't be arguing with me. I went to play football. That's what I'm saying." He said, "Don't shout, oh! You can't escape this matter. Where are you coming from?" <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Okay. In a relationship, if you find out that, that the lady you are in a relationship with have no sponsor, is it okay for you to sponsor her academically? Sure. You can. But don't that should not be a yastic that she must give something back to you. Since you are very generous. Since you are very generous and kind, you are Dangote's son. So go ahead, go ahead, but don't expect anything back. God is just using you. That's not a criteria that at the end of the day you are going to say, but if you tr <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you can. You can help really help people. You don't have to be in a relationship with people to help them. You can help anybody as the Lord leads you. Let's take two, three more, and then we're we done. Can we take one or two more? There's one yes, there. Okay. Daddy, please, I would want you to address this. I was dating a girl. I intended marrying her. But later, we broke up. But she still sees me in a dream constantly. But I don't see her. Sir, what can I do to stop that call? Because she always, she keeps calling and texting, saying that we are bonded. But daddy, I, we never had sex, so I don't know how possible. What do you do to stop her dream? <laughs> are you okay? Are you not happy it's not your dream? What's your business with somebody's dream? What do you do to stop her own dream? A dream that is not yours. Let her keep dreaming, but let her know there's nothing between both of you. Are you listening? It's a dream, and that may be a trap to make you continually emotionally bonded to her. Telling you that she's seeing you in a, a dream may be a trap. And if she, of course, if she keeps thinking about you, she'll see you in her dreams. No, you're not bonded to her. If you've worked out the relationship on plain notes, 
then you are not bonded to her. Are we okay? Sir, one last question, sir. Sir, I am dating a lady who told me that she has many male friends. And if I end up marrying her, she cannot do without these male friends. What should I do? Let them marry her. Let them marry her. If she says she cannot do without the male friends even after marriage, then let them marry her because there are going to be crises. Any woman that loves you very much, when it comes to an issue of another man, will be ready to sacrifice. Amen. Are we blessed? Let's be up on our feet. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Blessed be your name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Cause his face to shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Be merciful unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would up, uh, um, advise that it will be important if we keep doing this. Like I said, we want to see how we can help ourselves, help some of our brethren are missed who need help who need support and our constant coming um, letting ourselves known especially to the youth escorts will help us in promoting help when we need help so if the youth escort don't know you they don't know what you do they don't know your craft they don't know nothing when it's time to support you we cannot support you so also let them know what you do come around be in the youth meetings let's bond as a family so that when it's time to support, we can support ourselves. The Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name. Just get an offering and just lift it above your head. Everybody get an offering and lift your offerings above your head and speak to your offering. Get an offering and just speak to the offering. I can hear you pray. Put a seal on that which you have received by that offering. Go ahead and just prophesy on the offering. Been around the world, searching for a miracle. I found no one, nobody like you. I've been so many places. Searching for a better life I found no one Nobody like you, nobody like you Hey my Jesus Oh hey my Jesus Oh hey my Jesus Praise Master Jesus. For those of us that ask questions and they were not asked, just